I, I, I'm very much struck by this. If you were right, and it wasn't just a Potemkin attack, it was for real, or semi-real, like I said, yeah. warnings and all that kind of thing, but it wanted to be... That might explain for a start why Iranian television ran footage allegedly said, look what we've done, fire in the sky, things burning. It was actually a Chilean yeah, thing from Chile. Right. <laughs> footage that they'd pinched. Um, what they've actually announced is how, how helpless they are and how good Israel's defences are. Absolutely. So it, it's still very uh, unclear because if they ever decide to make the full strategic strike, they'll send a lot more missiles all at once and they'll get Hezbollah, the Houthis, the militias in sure. Syria and Iraq to fire all at once too. But I, I think um, what you're seeing, so the Saudis and the Jordanians both actively helped Israel. So what you're seeing, the, the Middle East has a natural system of two alliances, the Sunni Gulf states minus Qatar, plus Israel, plus the United States, against Iran's Shiite circle of terror, which also embraces some Sunnis like, uh, like Hamas. And what has stopped that from functioning well for Israel and the West is this dopey, idiotic policy that the Biden administration inherited from Barack Obama of trying to woo Iran into cooperation. So Donald Trump, and I'm not shy of criticising Donald Trump, Donald Trump had a much more intelligent and effective policy. Isolate and contain Iran and reassure the Gulf Arabs. America only has to do that. It wouldn't cost it one more dollar than it's spending now. And it's got everything it wants in the Middle East. I think that's absolutely correct. And uh, I think people should recognise uh, the protesters here seem to think that Israel's a pariah. What does it tell them that even after this Gaza war, you've got two Arab countries, Muslim countries, uh, including Saudi Arabia, which are actively helping Israel beat Iran? Because obviously they fear Iran more than they fear Israel. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right, Andrew. And not only that, the four Muslim nations, regional nations, Arab and North African nations, which made peace agreements and exchanged diplomatic relations with Israel under Trump, not one of them has broken diplomatic relations as a result of the Gaza war. The, the Gulf Arabs really have no investment in the Palestinian cause. And they certainly have no investment in Hamas, which is part of the Muslim Brotherhood and is directed by Iran. But there will come a lot of moments of truth quite soon. I think the Israelis will strike back at Iran. That's just my guess. I don't have, it, you know, any intel on this. I think they'll take their time. They'll let Iran stew in the juice of its technical failure. I don't think they'll hit the nuclear facilities, but I think they'll hit military facilities with missiles. It'll be deadly. It'll be quite different from this strike. And then Iran will face the conundrum, what it does then. Yes, and don't forget, uh, Israel's got a huge vested interest in stopping uh, Iran from taking that last step and getting itself a nuclear weapon uh, because that could be a game-changer. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks, Andrew.